Good evening. Welcome to the fourth in this series of lectures for the St. John's Clevedon Lent 22 course on the 12 festal icons housed and venerated at St. John's. After four weeks, our journey is well underway to understanding the various messages hidden within each of your 12 festal icons and also the themes that run throughout the collection as a whole. We've come a long way from the initial appreciation of what makes an icon and how we can read, meditate and venerate each icon. This evening we will extend our studies by considering the icon of the raising of Lazarus. This will be of particular interest to the members of the Order of St Lazarus. To strengthen his disciples' faith in him, Christ, before his passion, raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. The unheard of gesture brings the wrath of the Pharisees down upon him. The Orthodox celebrates the events depicted in this icon on the Saturday before Palm Sunday, the so-called Lazarus Saturday. Let Bethany sing with us in praise of the miracle. For there the Creator wept for Lazarus in accordance with the law of nature and the flesh. Then making Martha's tears to cease and changing Mary's grief to joy, Christ raised him from the dead. As with the previous icons in this series, we have a mountain scene. The town of Bethany is shown in the valley. The mountains on the right have three peaks, an illusion of the Holy Trinity. Some versions of this archetype show the left of the three peaks closest to Bethany to be pink, referring to Christ who, assuming human form, will bring joy to the city of man. The twin peaks on the left of Bethany allude to hypostatic union, the dual nature of Jesus as true God and true man. In the centre, Christ, with an imperious gesture, commands Lazarus come forth. His right hand is extended to call and beckon Lazarus, whilst his left hand holds a scroll with a list of the dead. Note the inscription above Christ's head and on his halo. As discussed in the first lecture, the final act undertaken by an iconographer on completing a commission is to sign the icon. Combinations of Slavonic and Greek characters are often used, although sometimes the vernacular is incorporated. The total accent marks indicate an abbreviation. The ICXC is a shortened form of Jesus Christ found on almost all icons of Jesus. The mystical script within the halo is an abbreviation of the existing one, or he who is, referring back to the book of Exodus, when God names himself to Moses, I am who I am, the most holy and sacred name. On the left is shown a group of the disciples looking on in fear and disbelief at these events. Sometimes a group of finger-wagging Pharisees is also shown. Next to the tomb are often one or two characters who have been charged with opening the grave. Although we've previously noted that the depictions and perspectives shown in icons can often be somewhat alien to the Western viewer, the look on the faces of those near the tomb couldn't be clearer especially as they are covering their mouths and noses. The King James Version of the Bible captures this so succinctly. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto her, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, are often shown prostrate at our Lord's feet. Although your version has one sister standing next to the open tomb and the other at Jesus' feet. The colours of the robes of the principal characters in iconography are often significant. 
Mary wears red and Martha blue. These colors are very important. Red represents humanity and blue divinity. They come together in Jesus, again in the hypostatic union where he is true God and true man. This is best illustrated in these two icons by the late Leon Lidemont of Walsingham. On the left is the icon of Our Lady of Walsingham and on the right, the Pantocrator. Our Lady being human is robed in red, but after the Annunciation, she carried within her Jesus. So her inner garment is blue. However, the colors are reversed for the Pantocrator again showing the hypostatic union of Jesus Christ as true God and true man. As we have the icon of Our Lady of Walsingham on display, and knowing of the parish devotion to Walsingham, having recently established a local cell of the Holy House, for a brief interlude, there are a few features of interest on this arch archetype. The same mystical characters appear near Jesus, signing and describing him. The characters above Mary refer to Mary, Mother of God. She wears a Saxon crown because the vision of the Lady Richeldis to build the Holy House in 1061 was in Saxon times. The throne has seven rings on the vertical poles on the back support, three on the left and four on the right. This is the representation found on the original priory seal. No one knows why, when the image was carved for the Holy House, one of the rings was neglected. The seven rings represent not as many say the seven sacraments, but the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you're looking to buy an image of Our Lady of Walsingham, make sure the correct number of rings are present. Our Lady holds a lily with three flowers for the Holy Trinity and two leaves for the hypostatic union. Returning to the raising of Lazarus, the final feature to note is that only two figures, Jesus and Lazarus, have halos of holiness. Tradition has it that St Lazarus travelled to Cyprus, where he was appointed by Paul and Barnabas as the first bishop of Kitiron, present day Lacana. He lived there for 30 more years, and on his death was buried for a second time. The current church of Hagios Lazarus was built over his tomb. In 890, a tomb was found in Lacana bearing the inscription, Lazarus, four days dead, friend of Jesus. Last summer, my colleague, the eye surgeon, Daniel Morris, made a pilgrimage to the second tomb of St. Lazarus in Lacarca to venerate the relics shortly before he was admitted into the order of St. Lazarus. We conclude with a prayer from the Orthodox liturgy for Lazarus Saturday. O Christ our God, who by thy voice didst raise Lazarus from the bonds of death after four days in the tomb, restoring him again to life, do thou thyself, O Master, Enliven us who are deadened by sins, granting life that none can take away, and make us who put our hope in thee, heirs of life without end. For thou art our life and resurrection, and to thee belongeth glory, together with thine immortal Father, and thy all-holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, now and for ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen and the dismissal hymn of the feast. By raising Lazarus from the dead before thy passion, thou didst confirm the universal resurrection, O Christ God. Like the children with palms of victory, we cry out to thee, O vanquisher of death, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>